Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Juliana Forlano for ACT TV. I'm here with Marxist economist. We're very excited to have him. He's gonna be a regular part of some of our live stream com coverage. Dr. Richard Wolf, doctor, thank you for taking part here today. My pleasure, glad to be here. So we're talking about gun control. What are the, what's the, what's the economic reason behind this whole debate about gun control? What are the economics? Well, the problem is that we allow guns to be made by companies that are capitalist companies that are out to make money. They want a profit, that's why they're in that business, like any other business. And one of the ways you make profit is selling lots of stuff. Every company that's a capitalist enterprise knows that. The gun producers are no different. So they want to sell guns. And like every other corporation, one of the ways you get people to buy guns is you advertise. But here the gun companies are a little different. They don't advertise by going in the usual places to get a billboard or a magazine ad. But they have a wonderful deal that other companies don't have. They have an association mm -hmm. that runs around the country mm -hmm. called the NRA, right. telling everybody that if you're a real man, you have a gun. If you're not safe, you can become safe with a gun. Constantly beating the drum about a gun, or maybe two, or maybe one in each car, and one in each bathroom would be helpful. This is the best advertising any capitalist could have, and that's really the relationship. The gun industry has a... NRA that does the advertising. The only thing better than that is that the NRA raises most of its money, not from the gun companies, but from the members who want to be in the NRA. Oh, wow, they really got a good... So you got an advertiser you don't have going. to pay all that much to. Huh. Really good deal. Wow. And then the NRA goes on to lobby and buy our Congress people. Absolutely, because you want the laws that will do what the NRA is there to do. Get people to buy more guns, make it as easy as possible to buy a gun, make it as convenient as possible. So yeah, you have a wonderful arrangement where the company uh, helps the NRA, the NRA helps the company, everybody makes a lot of money, and the politicians are brought in to do their part. It's very American. Are there any other kind of economic systems that could help mitigate against the fact that kids are getting gunned down in their schools by maybe controlling gun manufacturers? Or how do, how do other countries do it? Well, I think, in, first of all, in other countries, they wouldn't allow the, the, the proliferation of guns, even though they have private gun companies. By, gun, by just having laws anti-gun laws. Yeah, you can't have this kind right. of that. It's, kind. it's a little bit like the tobacco industry, right? As long as we said, gee, cigarettes are bad for you, but we let the cigarette companies advertise and do everything, then we were busy saying it's not a good idea, but everybody was dying of lung cancer. I mean, at least a lot of people were. We finally said this has to stop. Eventually, we'll do that with guns, too. You, you can't let the gun people keep doing this game, which is spreading the guns and spreading the violence and spreading the killing. We are already the country in the world that has more of this kind of killing with guns than any other country on Earth, per capita or anything else. Eventually, we'll have to put the kibosh on that industry the way we did on cigarettes because of the danger involved. The alternative system, do I think... Do you think that's happening? You think not that's happening? yet. Yeah. Not yet. The balance, the money that the gun companies are making, the money that the NRA can put into politics has been strong enough to prevent... Marco that. Rubio basically said to a student from Parkland that he wasn't going to not take NRA money. Right. Too dangerous. The NRA will not only not give money to people who are on the right side of this issue, but they will find someone to run against that kind of person and give that person a lot of money. So you're looking at a situation where there has to be massive, overwhelming public effort, like there was with cigarettes, to get this problem under control. You know, I'm not against having guns. Hunting, the people care about that, or they want to learn how to shoot a gun. The issue is doing it in a rational way where we produce this thing for those people who want it for a useful, acceptable purpose. We let the whole country decide democratically what kind of guns can be used, by whom and when. I have confidence the American people could make those decisions and we could solve the problem if we took gun production away from the private sector because it's driven by profit okay. and instead have it driven by the real needs and real dangers that should be weighed in reaching a proper plan. Well, one of the thoughts that I had, and I want to play this game with you called Am I Right? Because I love your opinion on, on things. Um, isn't, 
isn't the fact that uh, all the conversation around how to keep our schools safe, uh, arming teachers and having more police presence, all of that kind of falls back on the taxpayer to cover the cost of gun manufacturers being able to make as much profit as they can. Isn't this just another you know, stab at privatization? I think it absolutely is. And I think you, when you hear from the president on down that he wants to arm teachers, think about it for a minute. The one solution that they can come up with that they get excited about for murdering children is to give more <laughs> people guns. It takes really a special kind of brain to come up with that <laughs> nonsense, but it becomes sensible when you realize that's after all the point. Sell more guns. Oh. And if the teachers are going to have them, well, then we can expect school systems to start going out and buying the guns to provision the teachers, and they will have sold more guns. They will have turned a crisis that could have threatened their cozy profit-making deal and made it into something that they can get more profit still. What are the economic costs to all of this violence that's been unleashed? What are the hidden costs? They are enormous, and this is so typical of capitalism that people rarely ask your question, and they're really important. Let me give you just a couple of examples. When you shoot a person, you cause not just whatever the injury or death is to that person, but think with me for a minute, the anxiety of everyone in that family, the shattered relationships, they're, they're extraordinary in terms of the ramifications of this. Those costs ought to be investigated and looked at because they should be weighed into whether we really want guns because of the social cost. If you don't count all of those things, then you misunderstand the costs and benefits of having an industry like that. Let me give you other examples. You create in people an anxiety when guns are everywhere, when they see them, when they encounter them in the supermarket or the school or the... Yeah, every I mean, mother I know is terrified about how their yeah. child, and so, every child I know is going through shooter drills. That's right. There's a and huge uh, Let me be the economist for a minute. So suddenly, <laughs> no, no, I mean, even no, that's just good. in terms of what we, our yes, job is. Absolutely. Imagine now families that are going to decide to protect themselves because there might be a person with a gun. What expenditures are they going to make to make their house safer? To, make the, to talk about this without calculating the cost is irrational. You know, it's conservatives that like to remind us, you have to see the economic cost. Okay, well, let's talk about the economic cost of the anxiety. How many people are frightened? How many people will need psychiatric help to handle their fear? How much expenditure will there be to cope with these dangers, these anxieties? Even if it isn't about a buying of a gun, the ramifications of what this does are serious and ought to be uh, ought to be dealt with. When people have crippling anxiety, they can't produce in the workplace and they have to take no. time off, they have to get treatment. If you talk to a police officer, which I've done several times, they are very worried. Mm -hmm. Their whole attitude, when they now go, say, to, to, to talk to a motorist who's speeding and they stop the motorist, in their minds is, does this person have a gun? Do I have to worry about it? their whole attitude, the likelihood that they will overreact? Mm -hmm. All of these things are consequences of what we're allowing to exist. Mm -hmm. They ought to be counted because their impact on our lives is every bit as valuable and important to understand as the profit being earned by a gun company. Mm -hmm. And yet it isn't done. We're talked about, we're only supposed to talk about the Second Amendment, the right <laughs> to have a gun, without talking about the consequences of letting this happen still. So all of the people who are marching today across the country in a different sister marches, what um, do you think the power of the marches are going to have an effect? I think so. I think we see that already. When those young kids, the high school students in Florida, began to speak publicly and to mobilize, suddenly even the president, everybody else got frightened. They have to take a position. You just have to sustain that. You have to build that. And yes, we did it with cigarettes. We can do it with guns. And it should be done. And that, that's why a lot of us understand that those high school kids are real heroes and heroines. They broke through the kind of passivity that lets this stuff go on. And they're to be thanked because they show us the way.
I have a theory that uh, all of America's problems could be solved by campaign finance reform and or public financing of elections. Your thoughts? I'm in favor of it, but I think our problems are run deeper than that. If you let profit determine what goes on in a society, you get the problems we have. And the taboo against facing that should be broken. We should be able to say, hey, wait a minute, rather than fix all of the messes that these companies are creating, coming kind of after the effect to fix it, why don't we stop it from happening in the first place? You know, it's like in medicine. Rather than always having the doctor in the hospital help you cure the problem, why don't we do what's called preventative medicine? Give people the diets, the homes, the, the exercise, the lifestyles, where they won't get sick like this in the first place. It's much the cheaper way to go. So for me, deal with the system that keeps making profit what everyone drives at so that, of course, the people in charge of our businesses go to make profit. That's what they're taught to do in business school. That's what they're rewarded for. And then they forget about the collateral damage, the side effects of this profit drive. Remove the profit drive, and then you can deal with making the system work better. It's what we should have been doing for 50 years talking about this. We have to catch up. So basically, if we made the gun industry a nonprofit industry, or uh, a large percentage of their wealth would have to go into it, maybe building roads, schools, supporting communities, would, do you think that would undercut their, their, their deep desire to continue to make as many guns available to as many people Absolutely, as possible? Absolutely, because what you're doing is you're removing the profit So motor. we could raise their taxes, basically, because that's what taxes are for? We should be, have a system where the, whatever profits are made in any industry are used to make life better for people. You know, the economy is supposed to serve us, not we, the economy. Mm. And if we have an economy that makes us serve them, that's the problem, and that's what we have to deal with. And I think guns are really then no different. They should be produced in the way that people need, that are subject to the democratic desires of the people. If the majority of people don't want guns everywhere, that has to count for something and not be overruled by the private profit-fueled arrangements of the NRA. I mean, that's the real issue at the base. So the breakdown of, of, their, of the NRA system or what we're seeing, doesn't it, isn't it um, part of the breakdown of capitalism, what we're seeing people uh, coming out and marching against uh, this or that issue, this issue of guns specifically? Is this, are we seeing part of a larger trend that, that reaches other issues and not just I'm sure gun of it. control? I'm sure of it, and the way I would put it is this. We're living in a time of capitalism where it simply no longer, if it ever did, serves the mass of the people. It's creating an absurdly rich, tiny group at the top, which is probably causing even more damage to the rest of us than the guns do. It's making the mass of middle class stop being middle class, having a harder and harder time. God knows what's happening to people at the bottom. This is a system that for the most of us does not work. It works for those at the top, but that's not a sustainable arrangement, any more than the old kingdoms that made the emperors so rich and everybody else impoverished didn't last. It may take a long time, but I think we are coming to the end of a system that has been so unequal and caused so much damage, of which the gun example, like the cigarette example, are just small moments in a situation of a system that has run out of gas and is running out of support and that's why we're living in very interesting times. What would you say to the people who are marching today or the folks who are watching this live stream at home? What would you suggest to them or what would you say? We can make this a better country, we can make it work better, but you have to get out and become active. You cannot simply sit at home, mumble, complain, even <laughs> if you're right, even if you're right. You have to get out there. There again, those high school kids in Florida, they were shocked out of whatever they did before, and now they're spending time getting together, marching together, making their voices heard, and guess what? The country is listening, the world is listening, and that's how change always is made. Our society has a fundamental social problem of an economic system not working for us, and social problems need social movements mm. to be solved.
Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us and thanks for talking about this with me. Uh, Professor, thank you. Oh, thank you. Professor Richard Wolf. he has a show. Go find it. It's on YouTube. It's on a bunch of radio stations. It's called Economic Update, where you go into far more depth than we were able to do in this short amount of time. Uh, I had a hundred more questions, uh, but we'll have you back again. Thanks so Be much. my pleasure. Thanks. Thanks.